Hey everybody, welcome back to the Video Creator Podcast and in today's episode I'd like to kind of go down one of the many, many rabbit holes here on YouTube and I have to warn you that this episode really could leave you like addicted, confused and even jealous that someone could make multiple six figures a year simply whispering into the microphone because with ASMR video content, it's not as much about the visuals as it is about the audio. I'm here with my co-host and YouTube expert, Grant Ball, who's the creator of a YouTube channel called Treesicle that is actually almost closing in on a million subscribers. Uh, my name is Augie Johnson, and I'm the founder of VidChops, where we are a flat rate video editing service designed to take the burden of editing off YouTubers' hands. And today we're gonna break down one of the most popular ASMR channels out there, one of the pioneers of the ASMR niche, the channel is called Gentle Whispering ASMR, and it's a huge channel that's closing in on 1 billion views. Yes, that's right. Lifetime views for this channel is at 959 million views, and she's got about 2.1 million subscribers. So with that said, let's go ahead and get right into today's episode. All right, Grant. ASMR. We're talking about ASMR today, man. Um, we sure are. Yeah. So I guess it, it, I could say, have you watched any ASMR videos before? But I guess I would say, have you listened slash watched any ASMR videos before? I sure have. I've tried to fall asleep to a couple of them over the years. So it's funny. There's actually two categories of ASMR. There's intentional ASMR, which is what we're talking about today. And then there's unintentional. So unintentional ASMR is when somebody's like giving us a lecture and you think the information is interesting, but their voice is like very monotone and <laughs> blah, 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 blah. and it just like kind of makes you fall asleep. I prefer that, but uh, that, you know, that's not to criticize. It's just, this is a much more like, it, it's, they're trying to make you relaxed. And to some people, it's like, ah, don't try to make me relax. I'm, I'm anxious or whatever. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. so I, I enjoy ASMR in, in small doses. However, I am fascinated by the phenomenon. It's, uh, it's pretty, pretty great. Yeah, I, I really doubt when the founders of YouTube created YouTube that they had any idea <clears throat> that there'd be this huge niche called ASMR where uh, people would essentially just make really cool sounds, uh, make videos that have really cool sounds. I guess that's the way I can describe it. Um, the, the channel that we're talking about today is, is like a whispering channel. So the majority of the content on that channel includes um, whispering and stuff, but that's just like one small niche in ASMR, like a sub niche maybe. What, what are some other like things that people like to listen to or that you've seen in the ASMR world? So there's a lot of like, they'll kind of reach near the camera like this and pretend to like touch your head or whatever. So it's, it's like gentle and soothing. It's like someone's giving you a scalp massage type thing. Uh, there's also, they'll put the microphone up to their desk and then kind of tap their fingernails. Um, and make little noises like that, chewing gum, like kind of anything you can think of that's a sort of gentle noise that uh, some people will find very soothing. They'll fall asleep to it. And there's there's all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I think, you know, I can think back to a channel that I saw uh, in regards to like besides whispering type content and like every video was a new sound, right? Like so one day they would grab a jar of peanut butter and just <laughs> and just, you know, like massage the peanut <laughs> butter. And then the next day they'd have like a banana and they'd be peeling a banana and like, wow. Yeah. The video creation, like I'm not too familiar with how they pull this off, but just from watching a couple of videos, uh, maybe you can shed some light. It's like, my guess is like they turn the microphone volume up like super loud. Is, is that what they do? How would they record these? How do they get that audio to sound like that? Yeah, they'll they'll turn the microphone up really loud. They'll have a really high quality microphone. They'll also have ones called I think it's a bineural mic. Um, so it's like a, a stereo mic where it can pick up multiple directions, and then that kind of adds uh, another layer to the audio that makes it even more soothing. You can hear individual ears with individual volumes. It's, it's oh, big stuff. Oh, okay, yeah. So like uh, come, audio coming in one ear and then coming in the other. Yeah, so like you yeah. go, exactly, you go over here to this side, and then you go over here to this side, and yeah, <laughs> it's a surround sound experience. Okay, okay. Yeah, like uh, my best example of ASMR would be something like this. Welcome to today's 
channel. I don't know if you that can was even very hear that. Soothing. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Was, I'm falling asleep already in a good way. A good way. All right. Cool. So now that we've kind of covered what ASMR is, um, let's dive into this channel a little bit. Like I said, they have, uh, or she has, uh, this is a, a, a lady, I, I didn't catch her name, but um, she's from Russia, which maybe the accent helps her a little bit with the nice little uh, exotic accent. But she's got two over 2 million subscribers. Like I said, 959 million lifetime views. So she's closing in on a billion, you guys. And she's not a newbie, okay? She's been doing this. Her channel started in 2011, so 10 years ago. Um, in the past 12 months, okay, we've, we're recording this uh, in you know mid February, and in the past 12 months, she's gotten 110 million views. So that is a lot. That's that's incredible. Um, and as far as how many subscribers she's getting per views, it takes her about 446 views to get one subscriber. So I'll, I'll get your reaction on that on that grant. That seems a little uh, low. Right. And why do you think that is that it takes so many views for her to get a subscriber? So my guess is there's a lot of ASMR content on YouTube. Uh, like even right before this podcast, we were just kind of going through and naming ASMR channels that we found. I think it, there's just a lot of I don't want to say competition, but it's more just I think a lot of people search ASMR. They're not really looking for anything or anyone in particular. They just mm -hmm. kind of like, oh, that sounds nice. Uh, relaxing naturopath visits role play, you know? And so they click on that and it's maybe less about personality, uh, though obviously that is uh, a big extent, but people aren't necessarily following for like, I only want to see her. It's more okay, this works for me today. And then tomorrow they'll find another video and the next day. And it's, you, you see what I mean. Yeah. And, and you already kind of touched on it a little bit before uh, in that a lot of people are using this content to fall asleep, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I mean, they're not like sitting in front of their computer watching these videos because let's face it, face it, this gentle whispering ASMR channel, these are like 40 to an hour long videos where I highly doubt anybody's just sitting there watching it. Maybe some are, but I think most people are having it in the background while they're working or maybe um, as they fall asleep. So, I mean, I could see somebody every night Googling ASMR or searching YouTube for ASMR, finding something they like and, and literally wa playing a video every single day of the year to fall asleep to and never subscribing to a single channel. So that's kind of my take on it, um, kind of similar to what you were saying. Yeah, and I, I totally agree. And I think the fact that people often fall asleep to these videos is super helpful to these channels. So the, the reason for that is you, you mentioned that a lot of her videos are close to an hour long. So that allows a video to rack up a lot of watch time, of course. And because people are falling asleep, maybe within 15, 20 minutes, they fall asleep, the video keeps playing. And then, especially if they have autoplay on, then it's going to start playing other videos in her playlist. So it's she could get like four hours of watch time out of somebody who <laughs> isn't even awake, you know? And there's probably millions upon millions of views uh, that have been accumulated by doing that. And it's, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that was necessarily by design, but I'm sure that has worked in her favor over the years. Absolutely. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. She's racking up watch time while people aren't even watching. And that's kind of a little bit genius, I might have to say. Um, but probably not intentional by, by any means. Um, okay. So as far as, um, you know, her stats go, uh, in the past, like, few years, I would say in the past three years, uh, her best month was May of 2020, which was during the, uh, the pandemic. And she racked up almost 14 million views. So 14 million views in one month was her best month uh, in the past uh, three years, which is a lot. Um, if I take a look at her social blade, um, let me get back to the, the main social blade page here. You know, her, her views lately have gone down a little bit. Um, you know, whether she's releasing less often or more often, I'm not sure. She seems to, as of lately at least, have a, a release schedule of about one video per week. And like I said earlier, these videos are, are very lengthy. So um, for those that are watching on YouTube right now, you can see that in the past 30 days, she's had about 8.4 million uh, viewers in the past wow. month, um, which is good. 
but definitely not uh, up to par with, you know, maybe eight months ago when she had 10 million views. And then over a year ago when she had that 14 million view month. But her views are, are pretty pretty solid. They go up and down a little bit. But um, in my opinion, I think these this is all due to probably her release schedule. I bet, you know, some months she releases eight videos where she has a great a great month with tons of views. And then other months where she's maybe just releasing four videos. As of lately, views have been down a little bit. But here's the thing I wanted to ask you about, Grant. And that is these, look at this subscriber. <clears throat> month to month wow. subscriber. Now this makes me kind of think maybe that there's a bug going on with Social Blade or that maybe there's something fishy going on with her channel. I hate to say that, but um, <laughs> you know, in the like it let's just say here's an example. December of 2021, so about a month or two ago, she got 10,000 subscribers. The month before that, exactly 10,000 subscribers. The month before that, exactly 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. So she passed like 6 eight months, she's gotten exactly 10,000 subscribers a month. And then the month before that, it's 20,000. What, what, any guesses, Grant, on what you think's going on here? So my guess is Social Blade is glitching here. I yeah. believe, I remember looking at Kimi's stats last week when we were recording and she was getting kind of weird subscriber numbers too. There was massive negative dips for no reason. Uh, like it would, it would just say like negative a thousand subscribers and then she would get zero subscribers for three months and it just didn't make any sense. Um, I think this is Social Blade. It is possible she's, you know, using bots or something, but I don't know, just having exactly 10,000 subscribers every month and then exactly 20,000. I don't know, she, she's probably smart enough to not do something that easy to spot uh, if she was going to try to cheat the system. Yeah. So I think it's social blade. Yeah, I do too, actually, now that I look at it, because it seems like she was getting some pretty natural subscriber numbers um, back in April, March and April of 2019 when, when the data first shows and she's getting like 22,281, 23,299. And then all of a sudden, there's been some weird activity where it's like 20,000 or 10,000. That's it. Um, and why why would she go and buy subscribers and put her channel at risk of being shut down or demonetized or something when she's obviously already doing so well? So, anyways, yeah, not um, to mention, yeah, subscribers aren't even that helpful. It's yeah. it's how many views you're getting. If you just have a bunch of non-existent subscribers, that's not going to make your channel any better. So, very true. And uh, you know, I in the I have seen people in the past uh, buy subscribers or do things like that to inflate their numbers in order to maybe get better brand deals, right? If all of a sudden you're like, hey, look, my channel has a million subscribers compared to 100,000 subscribers, your brand deals are gonna be bigger, but um, she's not even getting brand deals. So you can't even uh, say that she's doing that. So, um, and you know what, what these companies mostly do is they will check to see like how engaged your audience is, right? If you have a million subscribers and every video you release is getting 800 views, then they can, they can see something fishy there, so. All right, let's go ahead and move on a little bit past the numbers. Before we do, um, any reaction to any of these numbers that, that we're looking at here with the, the 2.15 million subscribers, 959 million lifetime views, 110 million views in the past 12 months? Any other reactions? Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, these are crazy good numbers, like ridiculously good. I, I still want to say like the fact she has really long videos is definitely driving these numbers up because I mean, it's like a, a positive feedback loop, you know, the more watch time you get people falling asleep to her videos or having them on in the background, uh, the more views you will get. And I think she's kind of crossed a threshold to where she is so big and obviously already really good at what she does that her numbers, like, I'm not worried about her. I don't see her channel going anywhere anytime soon. Because, um, yeah, I mean, the fact that she got 8 million views last month, and that's, like, one of her worst months. <laughs> I mean, just off ad revenue alone, she is making good money, no yep. doubt. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about the money. So um, Social Blade revenue range, which is never accurate, says $25,000 to $401,000 per year. So that's a mm. huge range that doesn't really even make a lot of sense. So let's do it this way. Let's say that she's getting on average, we'll be conservative here, 
to five dollars per every thousand views. So that's that's a five three to five dollar CPM. Would you say that's pretty fair? Oh yeah, totally. Okay, that's and that's being you know on the conservative side. Um, <laughs> so in the past twelve months, like I said, she got one hundred and ten million views in the past year. So that would put a little bit more of an accurate range of three hundred and thirty one thousand dollars all the way up to five hundred and fifty one thousand dollars if she was getting that five dollar CPM. So at the five dollar CPM in the past 12 months, she made five hundred and fifty one thousand dollars. Pretty impressive. Oh my God. Yeah, seriously. And I also want to say, so three to five, you said it was conservative. Uh, that is definitely conservative now that I think about it. So channels of her size, it, it's it's funny. The bigger you are, the better your ads tend to be as long as your channel is in good standing. So she, I wouldn't be surprised if she's closer to like a 10 CPM. And then in December, when ad revenue gets ridiculous and companies are throwing as many commercials on YouTube as possible and ad revenue gets super high, she could be making like 15, 20 CPM and pulling in maybe a million dollars a year. Easy. Just off ads. It's, that is incredible. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Good for her. I mean, she deserves it. She's been doing it 10 years, right? Uh, and, you know, we didn't touch on it, but her channel has about 594 uploads. It's not even that much for, for 10 years straight. Um, you know, it sounds like she's on like a weekly release schedule. Um, and maybe, you know, a lot of people create their channels and never upload for years. So, okay. There's the money, you guys. That's what you came here for. Um, all this is possible, but it does not happen overnight. So let's go ahead and move on and talk a little bit more about the monetization strategies that she's using. Obviously, the biggest one from what I'm seeing is AdSense. She's, she's making money off her AdSense. And also, uh, I looked through a bunch of her videos and she includes her aff affiliate links, mostly to Amazon. And what she's linking to in the majority of these videos is the microphones and the gear that she's using. So a great move, um, I, I, you know, because People that watch her videos, I'm sure, are, are interested in ASMR. Maybe some go and want to start their own ASMR channels. Um, you know, any, any other ideas on what she could promote as affiliate links? Uh, affiliate links, maybe like essential oils, kind of relaxing oh. things, you know, massage oils. Um, anything kind of herbal that smells nice that you could, uh, you know, smell if you're feeling upset or whatever. Um, she could, I mean... Hell, she could start a clothing line. Why not? But I pretty much anything having to do with relaxation, maybe like massage items, I, I don't, things of that sort. She could definitely pull in some dollars from that. Very nice. Another cool thing that she does um, that I thought was was cool, at least, is that she includes timestamps um, in her in her YouTube description. So I'll go ahead and share my screen right now, and we can take a look at uh, a few of. Or just her description, right? Let's take a look at what her description looks like. Um, so here's a channel, one of her most recent channels, February 7th. She has these timestamps that say like uh, eye exams, ears quick look, checking your tongue. Um, this The title of this video is relaxing, net, mm, I don't even know how to say this, naturopath visit, ASMR soft spoken into whisper. So what I want to talk about here though real quick is, and this one she does not have her affiliate links. But another interesting thing that she's doing is she has an account on Amazon MP3, YouTube Music, Spotify, iTunes. So she takes all this audio and she like uploads it to these other channels. Now, I'm not sure if she's getting ad revenue from there, um, but there's obviously a reason that she's doing that. Have you ever seen another YouTube channel in general or ASMR um, that does this? <clears throat> Never. I have to say it's kind of blown my mind it's ingenious too because what she's doing is mostly the appeal is mostly audio so why not you just upload it to multiple platforms no extra work seems genius yeah and or this... are these different videos or are these just versions of her youtube video on spotify here i'm pretty sure they're the same i think they're um just it's just an audio version i think of the video so she'll just probably grab the audio Drop it in. I think it could be totally different though. These are like, she's like almost like an artist on here. She's got some <laughs> albums, you know, Autumn Summer Collection. <laughs> These are just collections of ASMR, which is pretty interesting. Yeah, wow, and this is really smart. I'm 
<laughs> Good job, gentle whispers. Yeah. And also, you know, she is Russian, so she has like a whole Russian side to everything she does um, where, you know, she can release a video in YouTube in English and then she'll also have like a Russian version sometimes. So I'd be interested to dive in and, and if I was ever to interview interview her, I would love to ask her, you know, what's what's the point of being on Spotify and, and iTunes and all these other places? So, okay. Um, let's dive a little bit into her thumbnails. Okay. I mean, um, she's obviously creating some videos that people are clicking on. So let's see how she's doing it. And can you see the channel now? Sure can. Yep. Okay. So as I scroll through here, let's just take a look right now. I'll just kind of describe what I'm seeing. A lot of big faces. She's, you know, big face with a smile. These are her most recent videos that I'm looking at right now. Sometimes um, she has an ASMR video here called Exploring Toys in ASMR, Tapping, Rummaging, um, where she's holding the toys up. I think that's a great thumbnail. Um, has like a little bit of a curiosity of like, oh my gosh, what would that sound like rubbing two toy cars together? So um, Only one way to find out. Yeah, only one way to find out. I'm going to click on that. Uh, and you know what, as I scroll through here, I do have the vidIQ uh, plugin installed, which allows you to see how many views per hour each view uh, video is getting. And her most recent video is getting 2.8 thousand views per hour. The next one, 1.8 thousand views per hour, 1.1 thousand views per hour. That's a lot, that's a lot of views per hour, you guys. These are people, that's enough to fill up a giant gymnasium. Let me uh, scroll down super far. Even a video from, this one here, two years ago, nine views per hour. <laughs> this one from two years ago, 23 views per hour, which is, that's impressive. Wow. But, but uh, let's go ahead and get back to the thumbnails real quick. What are kind of your, your impression of her thumbnails? What's the first thoughts? Well, her main appeal of her thumbnails, she definitely uses her face a lot and she is very good at it. I mean, uh, her camera is super high quality. She has a really intense depth of field, which for those who don't know, that's when the like one part of the image is super in focus and then the rest is very blurry. That tends to like really attract the human eye when the picture is like clearly making you focus on one point, which in this case is her face and you know, she's very beautiful. So it's uh, it works well for her. She also, she has like a very soothing or kind of mysterious or sometimes funny like the two million subscription celebration she's got like kind of a funny look on her face mm -hmm. uh she uses her expressions to her her facial expressions to her advantage here and yeah like it, it seems to mostly be very high quality screenshots of her face uh sometimes her hands she's got her nails all done um and i, I mean this is a tried and true strategy you know uh, high quality images face it's it's all there. Yeah, I agree. I I do think that um, she kind of figured out her thumbnail strategy and got better at it as it, at it over the years. Because if I go really back to some older ones, even like right here, this is three years ago. These just do not grab your attention like the the more recent ones. Like here, I'm looking at one that has like four different images it's called bag bags of tingles, which I can't even tell what's about or what it is. That's not very good. Obviously, her camera has upgraded. Her lighting has upgraded over the years. Um, but even with her, her best thumbnails, her more recent ones, I still think there is something, a little something to be desired. And the only feedback that I would have, which maybe could improve these, is like some sort of filter. Like you see like Mr. Beast and a lot of YouTubers doing it when they have the big face. They use like some sort of like sharpening or HDR filter to like just make it pop a little bit more. Um when it's shown on the home page or recommended or something like that. That'd be the only thing. I don't I don't think she needs text. I don't think she needs super colorful background. I think she's doing a good job, but just maybe that one layer of filter. What do you think about that? Yeah, definitely. And like again, her camera quality is fantastic, but I, I know exactly what filter you're talking about that just like increases the sharpness and it really mm -hmm. does make it pop. And she's also in her more recent videos, her thumbnails, she's done a very good job of like utilizing contrast and colors. Um, yeah. like, you know, I, I didn't mean to make it all sound like, oh, she just takes pictures of her face. Um, but it's like she's gotten very good at 
like using colors to her advantage and kind of if she has jewelry it's kind of like glittering near her and there's just a lot of like eye-catching things and she frames it well um and yeah her older videos just tend to be more n like normal like she just looks like she's sitting sitting in her room whereas her newer thumbnails like she's really like using all the color palettes and it's it's very creative Okay, very nice. Let's last thing we'll talk about is the the titles, and we'll go ahead and move on. But um, what do you think about our titles? And feel free to to speak some truth here. Uh, they're very simple. I think, I mean, it works for her. I kind of like them personally. Um, the way you ask that makes me think you're not a huge fan. <laughs> but I I tend to like shorter, kind of simple titles. Um, she also is using a lot of keywords, like ASMR keywords. So yeah. you can see she's using ASMR. That's big. Uh, she'll have things like simply relaxing chimes. Uh, like p th these are things that people will search for. So uh, like to me, these titles are like kind of calculated algorithm, like algorithm appealing titles. So she's not necessarily going for like the best most creative title it's more it it gets the point across about what a video is about uh it clearly does it well she's hitting the algorithm very well and that that's my opinion is that she's essentially just hitting keywords and not using any extra words beyond that how do you feel about her titles yeah I, i'm not <laughs> i'm not a huge fan of her titles because some of them, and I, I think it might be a little bit maybe of the, you know, English as a second language. Um, but some of them, I just really can't understand what the video is about. Um, let me see if I, I, and I think her, her more recent ones might be better. Um, but, and maybe it's because I'm not in this ASMR niche. But like this one right here, it says best facial ASMR exams. I don't quite know what that means. Exams. So that that is part of the ASMR niche. Okay. So uh, a big appeal, like one thing that's very popular in these ASMR videos is the idea of an exam. So like she looks into the camera and she pretends to be your doctor examining you, kind of like touching your face and like, oh, so to, you know, we're going to feel the lymph nodes in your neck and then we're going to pet your hair and uh, so it's it's like giving you focused attention and that that's actually one thing that humans tend to find very relaxing is when somebody is focused on you intently and kind of like gently caring to you that is like deeply soothing like it's in our dna you know okay yeah i get that i love a, a, a head scratch every now and then you know <laughs> mm -hmm. um but still, I, I I will say that the use of emojis and stuff in her titles is pretty cool. Um, but these things are just like, I don't know. I'm not a big fan because they're not really like getting me to want to click. For example, um, I don't know. Like here's a video, relaxing towel folding tutorial. I think that could just be better. But you, you don't want to fold towels? I, I would love to hear what it sounds like. I, I, I can imagine. I mean, this... <laughs> I, I do see myself tonight before I go to bed um, coming back to this channel and, and giving it a try to help me fall asleep. Makeup in nature. I'm not sure what that means, but like I said, I'm not in this niche, so maybe I'm just a little little um, like mirrored touch. So th these are things I can see as the video plays here. These are things that I just don't understand because this is exactly what you're talking about. She's looking directly into the camera and acting like she's touching your face. And must be whispering as well. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what mirrored touch is. I think what it might be is like she does, she, you know, puts her hands on herself like this and then you're supposed to do the same thing. Maybe it's like, you know, mirroring. Uh, that's my guess. Uh, some of these things like she's appealing to her audience, right? These are people who probably watch ASMR videos every day. So all of these things are like well known, well understood well searched for um so she's clearly hitting her audience she knows what they want and she's just throwing keywords at them and obviously designing these videos to appeal to these uh, very popular ideas in asmr so you know it, it works for her i i think the simplicity like it, it kind of the simple titles to me give her channel a very clean look you know some people they'll have like these really long titles and um, but hers just, I mean, it looks very clean to me. I like it personally, but that's just me. 
Well, make sure you hit that subscribe button for her then. Oh, I will. I'll like and subscribe. <laughs> Ring that bell. <laughs> Ring that bell. All the above. All right, cool. Um, you know, just as you were speaking there and just thinking about like, man, she could be doing so much more as far as monetizing this channel, but it's kind of a weird niche, right? I mean, what, what could she do? Come out with some ASMR CDs or, you know, what, what could she do? I, I was thinking, well, actually, you know what? There's a lot of apps out there, like meditation apps. Um, do, you, do you know the name of any of those apps? I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Yeah, there's a meditation app called Waking Up by Sam Harris. I, I haven't personally used any meditation apps. I meditate all the time, but the I don't know. I've never gotten into the apps for whatever reason. But yes, Waking Up with Sam Harris is the only one I know. Oh, also Headspace. Headspace, Headspace. is one. There you go. That's the one that I was trying to... I knew I have that on my phone. Never used it, but you know the ad got me and I downloaded it. But like, I think she needs to look into like having some sort of either not a either a brand deal or an affiliate deal with an app like that. She could drive a ton of listeners or viewers over there and uh, to download that app. So, it's, I think she needs to really get out there and start hitting up these companies. And you know, like some company might even want to like acquire her channel. Like they would say, "Hey, we'll give you a million dollars to purchase your channel." You know, like that. This is a community you've built that's right up our alley. So. Um, okay, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about not just ASMR, but just are there any other kind of channels out there that you have seen or maybe niches, not specific channels where people put them on fall asleep or people use them as background or something like that that would ac uh, accumulate all this crazy watch time kind of like these ASMR channels do? Yeah, so uh, going back to the idea of unintentional ASMR, there are channels, I think it's like, I think it's Stanford University, actually, um, uh, where they'll just have these 10-year-old lectures, and the information is fascinating. So it'll be like um, a, a lecture on magic and witchcraft in the 1700s, and it's like an hour long. Um, and then... But then they'll have like a hundred of these videos, maybe not a hundred, but, and then they'll have a video on like, uh, you know, altered states of consciousness and uh, mental illness, schizophrenia. And it's like these really in-depth, high quality information by a person who's very articulate. And I find it very relaxing. Um, there, there's a lot of videos like that. Um, I also, I mean, music is a, is a good one too, is people, if, if you're a musician, you upload to YouTube, then people will just kind of play through your your album and that is also a way to do it um those are kind of off the top of my head the ones that people would put on in the background and kind of forget about yeah have you ever heard of like the white noise channels and stuff like that <laughs> yes yes i have yeah so for anybody that hasn't heard of that it's like a youtube channel where every video is like a different form of white noise or um where you can play and fall asleep to it or like a like a rain machine uh, like a rain sound machine or something yes. like that um and, and and those channels i don't like i don't know if they get a lot of subscribers because people just like we said with her they go to go there and just watch it and leave but i know they get a lot of views and those are the kind of channels that people build where they're faceless right there's no person behind the channel saying hey what's up guys hit the subscribe button all that kind of stuff it's just a screenshot or not a screenshot, even just a, a background image a lot of times, and then um, the sound playing. Um, so if, you know, you're like, oh, I would love to kind of, you know, mess around and create a YouTube channel someday, but I don't want my face on it, I, whatever, I don't know what I want to do. Like, there's a lot of different ways to grow a channel um, on YouTube, and you can find, you know, maybe jungle sounds would be a good one, and you can make jungle sounds or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those atmospheric channels that it kind of just add to ambiance and you can do something else while you're listening to it. I, I, I mean, there's a big market for that. The only issue with those videos, if you can call it an issue, is so uh, it's harder to have mid-roll ads in those videos. Not because you can't put them in, but because if people are listening for like ambiance or relaxation, then... You know, if you're just interrupted by an ad every six minutes or something, then people are going to get annoyed and they're going to be more likely to want to watch other channels without ads. Uh, however, those are great ways to accumulate watch time and just kind of, you know, build subscribers and, and numbers. Okay. Yeah. Let's go ahead and getting close to wrapping this up. But before we do, I'm going to ask you the toughest question of the day, and that is, 
what would you do to improve this channel? Is there anything that you would, you know, if, if, if she said, hey, Grant, I'd love to, you know, get your advice. What kind of advice do you have for me? My main thing would just be more affiliate links and selling things that her fan base would really like. I mean, even just uh, I don't know, like a microphone plushie or uh, a makeup line or uh, again, like essential oils, um, kind of or even like a, one of those pillows filled with, you know, lavender or whatever mm. um, that you can kind of sleep on. It smells really good anything like that or face masks earplugs anything that would help you sleep uh and just like really pitching that especially because going back to the mid-roll problem um her ads probably aren't worth as much like the three to five cpm is probably what she's usually getting because she probably like she only has uh pre-roll ads yeah. so if she could get these products that are in the relaxation market and start pitching them at the end of her videos, during her videos, really whenever, uh, I think she would sell a, a lot, like a lot. And I, I'm, I would be all for that. Nice. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. She, she needs to just be a little bit more business minded. Maybe, maybe as, as, as far as her channel goes, if I was to give her um, some advice on how to maybe grow her channel, I think that, she needs to get into more of like the themed ASMR video types. So it seems like a lot of them are just like whispering or, but the ones I think that do well is when she has like a theme to it. Like one of them I saw earlier was like how comb, like combs or the one we talked about with the toys, right? Toy car ASMR or every, like if every video could be a little bit different theme and she could, you know, she's got a great personality and, and look to her, like dress it up, right? Like, Today's the toy car theme and, you know, maybe dress up like a race car driver or uh, today is, I don't know, this, you know, Chinese food uh, ASMR where she's like squishing or eating Chinese food and she could, I don't know, have the Chinese flag behind her or something like that. I think those kind of videos would be a little bit maybe more mass appeal, a little bit more entertaining um, and that could be a great way for her to grow her channel. Mm, totally and maybe some like nature sounds go out near a stream and I don't know, maybe she lives in a city it might be hard but you know just kind of like going out where some birds are chirping and whispering into a microphone could add some interesting ambiance and just uh going back to the theme idea a nature theme why not i think it'd be wonderful yeah definitely and you know since she does speak russian why not have a separate channel for your Russian videos. I see like she'll sprinkle in uh, a couple videos that have like Russian titles. I, I didn't watch them, but I'm, I'm assuming she's speaking Russian in those. Um, so why not have a whole separate channel with just Russian content? And then you can capture that audience there too. I think, I think there's a lot of opportunities for her. And if she sticks with this, I think she's going to continue to grow. And I mean, she's making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year um, as a YouTube creator without even fully, you know, taking advantage of all the monetization strategies that are out there. Um, any other final thoughts, Grant, on this channel? Mm. Uh, I mean, overall, she's doing fantastic. They're really, like overall, I, I'd give her an A. And I, I really like that she, if you go into her description, she has timestamps for everything. Like her, uh, her videos are very well laid out. So, you know, looking at the relaxing naturopath visit, uh, you can see everything is split up into chapters. So uh, blood pressure measure. So she's measuring your blood pressure. Now she's checking your mouth. Now she's checking your cheeks for TMJ. And then I, you know, it's like you can kind of click through to whatever you're looking for. Um, I, I think this is really smart. Like people, they, they like to skip around and find exactly what they want, uh, what'll get them to relax the best. Um, I, I think that is genius. She's also, uh, one thing I find very interesting, if you scroll to the bottom of her channel, or, or just her homepage, rather, uh, yeah, the bottom of her homepage, she has other ASMR channels that she has favorited. Um, and so she's kind of like, she's clearly tight with a lot of YouTubers and is collaborating and probably, uh, you know, talking to them behind the scenes. It's always very yeah. smart to do that. Uh, and I'm, I think that's wonderful. All right, guys. So there it is. We just broke down one of the OG ASMR channels. Some people say she is the originator of this niche. 
Um, and so shout out to her. Great job. Uh, if you guys are listening on Spotify or iTunes, please hit that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate a five-star review on iTunes as well. If you're watching on YouTube, you can subscribe there as well. And we will see you guys in the next episode. See you later.